Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke. And I'm Sabrina. And today we are in Jiayi City, Taiwan, home to some incredible street food and local fare. But today we are going to be sampling its fine dining. We actually just got back from the Philippines and we had a very similar experience at the world famous Bale Du Tong restaurant. So today's episode is going to be very similar to that episode. We are here at this restaurant behind us. I'm not exactly sure what to expect. I've never had a fine dining experience here in Jiayi City. We're going to be having multiple courses, meeting the chef, and trying some of his gold medal award-winning dishes. So we're super excited. Let's go in. So we just watched the chef preparing some of the dishes. We met uh, Chef Chen, award-winning chef. We saw all of his medals. He's won gold medals in different cooking competitions all over the world, including Malaysia and China. And we're here in our private room about to eat. I am super, super hungry. We have nine courses coming out, so let's begin. So as I mentioned earlier, I didn't really know what to expect whatsoever, but the first dish of appetizers has arrived and this is just absolutely beautiful. So we have a beautiful plate with three different items on it. Everything on here is pretty much edible. So we've got our first dish here, which is a fresh fruit salad. I see some uh, blueberries in there. I see some strawberries in there. And then hiding in back, we've actually got some scallops. So there's all kinds of colorful flowers in here as well. And it's also served in this sort of rice puff. So it looks like everything is edible here. This dish over here is really interesting. We've got three different items. The first one has been sort of pressed into a square and it is a persimmon square with mozzarella cheese. So the persimmon has been preserved. Back here is a cheese with uh, nuts in it. And then the third one is mullet roe served with cheese and just really decorative. I don't even really know exactly what everything is going on there. Then up here, we've got a uh, yogurt. And I'm not sure exactly what the flavor of the yogurt is, but there's tons of flowers in it. It almost looks like a little garden sort of sprouting from the yogurt. This just looks absolutely incredible. Such beautiful presentation. I'm ready to dig in. Let's start with the first little salad. I'm definitely gonna grab one of these scallops and try to get some strawberry. Mm. The scallop is very savory and the tenderness of it matches pretty much the tenderness of the strawberry. It completely fell apart in my mouth. But of course there's a lot of fruity strawberry, almost sour notes going on. So I'm actually just gonna take the whole bowl itself and uh, chase it with a little bite here. Mm. Oh man. Mm. I think there's green onions in there. Wow. So I'm gonna start with the first of these three little appetizers on this platter. I'm gonna pull this one off, which is the mozzarella with persimmon. So I think this is all sort of like candied persimmon on the outside and then two little chunks of mozzarella on the inside. Whoa. Whoa, I've never tasted anything like that. That is incredible. The mozzarella cheese in the middle is quite firm, but actually the persimmon on the outside was almost like a cool paste. So it sort of coats your whole mouth very like umami. Let's try number two here, which is the uh, cheese with some nuts in it, I suppose. So let's try that. Mmm. Mmm. Very soft, very creamy. And then a little bit of nuts that must have been steamed. That was a lot more sweet than the previous one. So third and final one here is the mullet row. I'm gonna take this part off. Mm. Wow, that was also very unique. All of those were completely different in texture. That last one was actually wrapped up with Asian pear. So it had a crisp crunch, but you can definitely taste that mullet row coming through. So it's a little bit salty and a little bit seafoody. All of those very, very unique. So we've got one more appetizer here. This is the yogurt. And you can see on top here, we've got all these beautiful flowers and then um, some puffed rice. It looks like puffed purple rice. So let me get, oh, it looks like there's a chunk of something underneath too. Maybe some fruit. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. Oh my, I could eat that for breakfast like every day. It's perfectly yogurty, creamy and a little bit tart, but then the puffed rice on top really gives it some texture. And there's all kinds of like floral notes too from those flowers. That is just so beautiful. Oh man, that one might be my favorite of the appetizers. I think there's a little bit of maybe mandarin orange underneath there. Yeah, oh, that one's my favorite, so good. 
our second course has arrived and this is it in front of me here. So we have this really interesting looking dish served in a, uh, almost like a bird cage. So I'm gonna pick this up and reveal underneath the beautiful, exquisite looking sashimi platter. So we have all different kinds of sashimi here. Um, the first one we have down here is a sweet shrimp. Over here we have the uh, squid that has roe on top. This is amber jack. This is tuna, the shrimp's head. And lastly, a red snapper that looks like it's almost been marinated in a little bit of onions. Maybe that's some chili flakes on top and some green onions. I am a sucker for sashimi. It's my favorite dish always. So I'm gonna go and start first with this beautiful looking, look at all the marbling on this amber jack here. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of soy sauce here. And also I'm gonna grab some wasabi to put on top. Just a little bit of wasabi. And let's try that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is seriously creamy. It's not the same sort of oiliness you get from tuna. It's more of a thick, fattier cream and served nice and uh, cold. But that soy sauce is just a little bit salty. So the next bite I'm gonna go in for is the uh, Squid here, I'm gonna take a little bit of calamansi juice, I think, probably go in with uh, no soy sauce on this bite. Wow. Mm. The squid, once again, almost turns to a paste, like a fatty, uh, not oily, but fatty, creamy sort of paste in your mouth. Again, really subtle flavor, but then a little kick of calamansi. Next up is the red snapper that has been tossed in a marinade and with some onions. Mmm, that is so good. Well, I've never had sashimi that has almost like a smoky chili flake on top and then a little crunch from the onions and then just super soft fish. I'm gonna go for the shrimp next. We've got a sweet shrimp here, quite a large one too. Wow, check that out. I'm gonna definitely dip this in the uh, soy sauce and put a little bit of wasabi on top there as well. As far as raw shrimp go, they're not usually my favorite, but I'd probably say that that was the best one I've ever had. It has more of a texture than the ones I've had before, opposed to just being super, uh, almost gooey, which some raw shrimp get. That was really good. And I've saved the, the best for last, or my favorite for last, which is the tuna. Just beautiful marbleization on there. Wow, just a little bit of soy. And that wasabi is just really, flavorful too, so I get some wasabi on there as well. Oh man, that is beautiful. Mm. Oh. The texture of tuna always wins for me. It is just so oily and buttery, and then the flavor, natural, almost sweetness from that tuna, so good. That was an incredible sashimi platter. Our third dish has arrived. The chef and one of the other chefs just came in to prepare it in front of us. So this is sort of a take on Beijing style roast duck. But instead you can see here, it's been put into a sandwich. So anytime I'm at a fancy restaurant and I see them bring out a toasty sandwich, I get seriously excited because I know that there's gonna be some really good ingredients inside. So inside this one, we have a little bit of scallions and a little bit of cucumber julienne, and then that nice piece of, um, it looks like it's been grilled chicken with some sauce on top and some sesame seeds. My mouth is actually watering like crazy, so I'm just gonna bite into this right now. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if I could only have one sandwich for the rest of my life, it would probably have to be this one. That is just perfect, perfect sandwich. Perfectly toasty, perfectly tender meat on the inside, crunchy veg, and then that sauce. It's a little bit sweet and a little bit savory, almost like a barbecue. It almost sort of reminds me of like a Japanese style barbecue sauce, but it's just all held together perfectly in this toasted bread. Mm. 
the fourth dish has arrived. Chef Chen just brought it out to us and this one looks really good. I saw it in the menu earlier and I was super excited to try it out. So this is the giant steamed grouper in XO sauce. So you can see underneath of here we have grouper meat, which is like a huge massive fish that has been steamed and then topped with that XO sauce. But let me kind of break off a piece of the fish here and I got to eat it with the noodles. So I'll break a piece off the end, make sure I can get some of that sauce. Oh man, that is a huge chunk of fish. Try not to destroy it too much. There we go. All right, let's try it out. This looks so good. Mm. Mm. I love how he's playing with the contrast of textures there. Very crunchy fried vermicelli glass noodles on top and then very soft steamed grouper underneath. So dish number five has just arrived. This is one of the dishes we saw Chef Chen preparing out back. So we have two different types of fried shrimp, almost like tempura. One is fried in a batter that it's made of puffed rice, and the other is fried in a batter of thinly stripped rice paper. So almost like a spring roll that has been cut into these small strips. So we have both of them here. Just once again, this beautiful presentation. We've got this wooden sort of log here. And then on top, we've got the um, rice puff version with a little bit of mayonnaise on it. And then down here is the version with this really super crispy deep fried rice paper in strips. So I'm actually gonna start with this one up here. I was advised that I have to start with this guy. So oh, let's try this. Mm. It looked like it was going to be extremely crunchy, like almost hard to eat, but actually those rice puffs aren't that hard. They're actually sort of soft. So they're almost pillow-like or spongy. And then it is a little bit crispy for sure, but the flavor was the um, mayonnaise there. It's almost like a tangy mayonnaise. One more bite here. Mm. Number one was really good. This is number two now. We can see which one is better. So this is prepared with that rice paper, as I mentioned, and then all kinds of dressing on top and a little bit of a salad. Mm. Oh, wow. It is a passion fruit yogurt dressing that's on top of it. So it's like sour and tropical flavored, but then super crunchy from that rice paper and then a meaty, meaty shrimp on the inside. Man, the flavor of that passion fruit with the shrimp just goes surprisingly well. Mm. Well, I'm really excited to try this one. Luke loved it and told the chef that it was his favorite dish. So I'm pretty excited to try now. I don't know how to approach it. So the passion fruit is so good. So we're taking a mid-meal break to go check out uh, the chef preparing the next mm -hmm. dish, which is going to be at the sushi bar. Oh. So we've got two different pieces of sushi here. The first one is the salmon roll. This says hot sauce somewhere hiding in there. There's actually pieces of apple, there's thin slices of scallion, and then salmon roll on top. And then this has been broiled with the torch. The second one here is broiled once again, but the ingredient is different. This is actually dry aged uh, mullet roe. So a type of fish eggs, and then just like a nigiri style on top of rice. So I was advised to start with this um, salmon roll. Just check that out. Mm. Mm. The primary flavor there that I'm tasting is the smokiness from being torched. It's really, sort of got a slight burnt, almost slightly bitter flavor to it. Going for the next bite here, this is the dry aged mullet row. Actually, earlier we had it in another dish and I think that was the first time I've ever tried this ingredient, but it's really popular here in Taiwan. So once again, broiled on top, you can actually see some of the rice uh, got slightly burnt there too. So 
I'm gonna eat this and then chase it with that. Mm. Wow, so that mullet roe definitely does have a, a quite a strong fish flavor. But if you can enjoy that, then it's really nice because that rice has a little bit of a vinegar flavor to it and it goes nicely with the smokiness once again of being a char broiled on the top. Really like slightly bitter burnt flavor to it. Both of those are really interesting. Not your uh, conventional sushis, but really good. Immediately following the sushi platter, we have our soup course. So here we have a nice presentation with this uh, little, almost like a tea, uh, tea glass and a kettle, but it's actually got chicken soup on the inside. So you can see that really thick, beautiful looking chicken soup. I'm just gonna try on its own here first. Oh man, it smells very fragrant, very chickeny. Let's try. Mm. Oh man, very chickeny, not salty really whatsoever. Just the natural flavor of the chicken. Wow, that is incredible. So after I try the uh, original flavor, I was told to put this uh, flour actually inside. So I'm just gonna grab this flour and put it inside here. Mm. Oh. It doesn't really affect the flavor much, but you can you can smell that flower very like fruity almost. So now is the part of the meal that I was looking forward to the most. Uh, we're having one off menu item, which is actually the gold medal dish that Chef Chen won the gold medal with in Malaysia in 2014. So we're gonna actually watch him prepare it right now. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'm ready to eat it. So we just got a little peek of how the uh, gold medal dish is prepared. We didn't get to see the whole thing because it is a secret recipe, but uh, what we did see was that they were sous vide duck breast. And then that same duck breast was then fried, like fire fried. And uh, then I think there's gonna be something with like a beef roll. Just really, really innovative food. Very creative chef. He's sort of like a mastermind of creativity. Really cool. And the food has just been delicious so far. The gold medal dish has arrived. This just is a piece of art. Check this out here. We have the sous vide duck that has been fire fried. A nice pink color on the inside. And it is served with all kinds of different vegetables. We've got cabbage. We've got beans. This is barley. And then this is the uh, beef roll. So you can see that beautiful beef roll that is served in a white wine sauce. We've got some zucchini, carrots, some peppers, and it looks like some onions on the side. But then we're also served this sauce over here, which is for the sous vide duck. And this is a wild berry reduction. So let me grab a piece of the duck, which just looks so good. Check that out. Wow. There's already a little bit of the sauce on there, but I gotta dip it in a little bit more of that wild berry sauce. So let's get some of that. This is the gold medal dish. Mm. Wow, that duck is so soft. Mm. You usually get a little bit of a gamey notes with the duck, but not whatsoever on this one. Definitely the most tender duck I've ever tasted. And then with that berry sauce, it is very sour and very fruity. Let me break into this. So we can try that. Oh man, that is like a little steak. Oh, check that out. Wow. Oh, my mouth is watering. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of that white wine sauce. Mm. Mm. That steak was seriously juicy, per cooked perfectly. That is just like a perfect medium rare, just how I like it. And actually that's fried quinoa on top. So it's really, really crispy. I gotta go in for one more bite and get some of these, these veg and everything in one bite. Man, this is seriously good. Better than I even expected. Let's go in for a piece of duck 
with all of those goodies. Let's try that. Mm. Oh, that berry sauce. Wow. That is what dreams are made of. We are finally at the last dish of the night. Um, everything here has just been incredible. Chef Chen is really uh, generous and an incredible cook, awarded uh, many gold medals from all around the world. We're here, as I mentioned, in Jai City, which isn't typically a city when you associate um, sort of haute cuisine with, but I'm telling you that today's meal was pretty incredible and for only 1,100 Taiwan dollars, you could have the same set meal, except for the gold medal dish that is. But I mean, for the price and what you get, I think that is totally worth it. So Jai, you know, has a lot to offer from uh, street food, but also from uh, fine dining and Chef Chen, born and raised here, so really incredible. Our last dish has arrived and uh, suitingly, we have a springtime dish. We have the Sakura mousse uh, cake. So you can see there's actually little Sakura leaves. Let's try that. Mm. Oh man, mm. that is so good. That is in-house made mousse cake with chocolate graham cracker crumble bottom. The Sakura has like a really floral, that's just been the theme all day. Now I'm really starting to realize that we've been seeing flowers, eating flowers, springtime, the seasonal menu. It's been a theme all day, but uh, to finish it off with the uh, cherry blossoms is pretty incredible. Wow, that is good. I'm gonna have another bite of this. There's almost like a little jelly on top. You can see right there. And then mousse underneath kind of holds it all in. And then that cho chocolate uh, graham cracker bottom is really good. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. We are just outside of the restaurant now. Thank you once again to Chef Chen for just being such a creative culinary mind. All of his food was delicious. Thank you to our friend Oliver for helping us film this video. And if you enjoyed this style of video, similar to the video we filmed at Balai Dutong in Pampanga, the Philippines, and today's episode where we're having these multi-course meals, let us know down in the comment box. We want to hear your feedback. If you enjoy this style, we would of course love to keep making it because the meals are just so good. So let us know also down in the comment box what you thought the most delicious looking dish we tried today was. And we'll see you again from Taiwan soon. Bye. Bye-bye.